We've been told that gatekeeping is, especially in media and gaming communities. However, we've seen how the left pushed away their own beloved IPs like Lord of the Rings and, or Scooby-Doo. Um, but he continues on with another super chat saying for $3 US. Thank you, Ben. But I've noticed how important gatekeeping is. The church is always gatekeeped in terms of bad actors and heretics. How do you balance gatekeeping and being welcoming to newcomers? Well, I guess that would depend on, uh, pol I guess in, in terms of politics, Ben, or, I mean, you don't have to send a super chat, but I mean, I, I'll, I'll try and answer that in three lenses. So in reference to basket weaving, politics, and then hobbies and IPs that we enjoy. I'm going to do those three things. Politics is going to be always the hardest one because there's always going to be people that you disagree with that are somewhat on your side and that you have to make sure that, I mean, the, the obvious way to tell, especially for bad actors, is like how quickly are they to fed post? How impulsive are they, you know, interacting with these characters online or in a discussion or a live stream or a discord server can sometimes be a very easy way to like delineate what kind of actor they are or what they do. Um, also, you can always judge a man by their works. You know, you shall know him by his fruits. And so those things also immediately come to my mind is, is that, you know, if you can tell that someone's a bad actor or that, you know, they've, or, you know, age also plays a role because I do know younger men in their early twenties that want to take action, that want to storm the Bastille tomorrow, or just read something by, you know, um, death of the West or death of a superpower by Pat Buchanan. And they realize how things are borked beyond all recognition. And so we got to go, you know, we got to go storm the beaches. We got to go like take over Washington DC now. And I do have some lamentations for people my age and younger. Cause it's like, well, all that stuff happened already. The revolution already came and went, but you know, we have to act accordingly because we are indeed characters and creatures of prey, not predators, uh, at least if you're on the right. And so uh, politically, I think that it always has to come and discern about how openly you talk about certain things. Cause there are stuff that will get you banned very quickly. Um, how quickly are you to try and infiltrate like things that would make you clearly look like someone's, um, sort of brown nosing, you know, kissing ass and how quickly they want to get into the scene. Are they trying to buy their way in? Are they trying to get you to reveal information? I mean, those are quick ways to start gatekeeping. Um, in regards to, uh, let's say, well, that was politics. So let's say in regards to, I mean, religion or hobbies or things like that. I mean, um, that, that's in one regard. I'm kind of happy that in like the three years I've spent really like searching for Christianity and coming back and, and like finding the Orthodox Church is that the catechesis is so ridiculously long. Um, and, you know, it. I've been told by others that it's a really good way to help get like the political, you know, trad extremist type political actors to like simmer down or to, they'll eventually leave because it's not right away. So that helps, but I think that that also requires gatekeeping in the ends of having well-defined rules. Like, especially if you own, like, say you own a Discord server, right? Like, you know, you're going to have mods. You're going to have things that are clearly set aside for what you need to do and things like that. And I mean, as for IPs, uh, I mean, you're just going to have to call out bad actors. I mean, we, we've seen this all the time with... Uh, various things like Dungeons and Dragons, right? It's almost like, it's almost like the perfect example because, you know, there's this push and they recently had from uh, Wizards of the Coast, we have wheelchair accessible characters and campaigns. And it's like in a world where spells and magic can instantly heal and regenerate wounds, organs, and bring people back from the dead, you opt to be the cripple, you know? Okay, not my, <laughs> not what I would play as, you know? Um, I would probably create human Giga Chad like characters great with the sword, but that's just me. But um, you do you, but you also have to be actually very vocal. I mean, Turnip has set a very good example to call out literal, you know, BS in his own church community. I mean, the same thing happened with Wizard of the Coast and their general uh, licensing agreement or their, their game service license or whatever. They were going to change it. Uh, and deviate from the, you know, the open gaming license that they used to have for years that allowed, you know, Roll20.com to exist and people to set up their own campaigns and to sell their own campaigns as long as they abided by the very short licensing agreement. They wanted it to be monetized. And people went, every nerd and their mother went to town on this thing. And Wizards of the Coast has kind of pulled back. The battle is not over by any stretch of the imagination. But even, you know, non-political channels like for instance there's a guy by the name of tim's variety that i like to watch because he does gaming content reviews of things and war thunder and stuff like that and he's just like yeah this is bad 
And he's like, and he actually had to get very personal and say like, listen, this is my career. This is what I work in. This is where I, you know, I've done public service before. And he's like, yeah, this is like a really shitty agreement. And so that kind of stuff is important for us to be just active and vocal about it. So, I mean, you kind of have to be welcoming to newcomers, you know, I guess in the same way that you're going to have to interact with anybody, you have to slowly get to know them. You have to conduct some form of psychological triage and determine very quickly if they are worth their time and worth their effort. I mean, that also requires you to see what kind of work they put out or how they conduct themselves or how they behave themselves. Lord knows I'm not very good at that in some regards. I can still be very impulsive and shitposty. I know it's fun, but I, uh, on one hand, I kind of have to often balance between this name slash brand I've put out for myself as sort of this prudent individual when at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's sometimes fun to type a certain letter in the alphabet and see what happens next. But you have to be careful of who your audience is. And at the same time, who watches or follows you on Twitter, which are a lot of big named people. And so that's always a balance. But as for newcomers, you know, um, I've always said yes to people who want to interview me or want to like chat or have an idea and respond to DMs. Um, I'm not as like instantaneously like, yes, okay, let's do it. Um, I will always tell people, and there was a gentleman I actually have to get back to via Twitter DMs about this. who was on Jay Burden's show. He asked if I, if we could speak. And I kind of have to watch his streams and I have to like watch his content or peruse what he talks about, peruse his tweets and be like, is this a guy I want to talk to or associate with? Is he worth bringing in? Not to say that I'm a gatekeeper in any way, stretch of the imagination. I'm not, I don't think. But, you know, even as someone who creates content and analysis and commentary, I have to think about those things. So I guess in those ways, Ben would be the way to do it and balancing out my hobbies, religion, or my personal friends and relationships, or even my hobbies and IPs. Those are things that come into my mind. Um, I really actually despise though, the whole Harry Potter thing, for instance, this is an IP rant, but we're in the super chat. So I'm just going to go off on this tangent, but there was some, I really, I, I don't think Harry Potter is like right wing literature, you know, it's a, but because like she's a turf, there are people that think like owning a set of Harry Potter is a way to own the chuds when she doesn't agree or to own the libs, but she doesn't like you either, right? You know, she's still got her own politics. She's just like a single issue person. It's on regards to the issue of, <clears throat> on the issue of uh, the transgender question. And it's not like she's a big advocate for what you and I may believe or think in. And sometimes I find that stuff to be uh, rather concerning. Um, that always worries me. So I, I, I hope that that answers your, your question, um, it, Ben. But, uh, you know, in, in the same way that I actually, in the other aspect of gatekeeping, I actually don't like Tink or, or Malcolm Kayoni or whatever his name is, where it's um, but personal observation. My problem is, is that, you know, one, the enemy of my enemy is not my friend. They'll happily come after my head as well um, if the opportunity arises. But two, we talk about the neocon cycle or how yesterday's revolutionaries are today's conservatives and that, you know, uh, neoconservatives were just disaffected Trotskyists. That's not a right wing critique. I mean, even liberals like Francis Fukuyama has done that. I talked about that in my video, The Ratchet's Paul, um, about how the ratchet turns leftward and that all of a sudden, um, you know, because the right doesn't have institutional power and we're very much a part of that high low versus middle game. Um, how many of us are taking on Marxist thought or analysis? Sometimes I can speak with them, and I've done that before, whether it was on the Fed Post or their new podcast, These People Are Sick, that they are still got a one-track Marxist analysis lens, and they can identify spiritual issues. But to them, it's just, we are all slaves to capital. When that's not 100... I mean, there's critiques of capital from the right as well. We're, we're not... I've always said, do not turn the GDP into a golden calf, but um, I don't, I don't want to associate with that person. I think that um, we've got enough of that crap is enough online and in some of our thinking that we, we don't need it. I mean, Lord knows we know where Marxism, Marxism takes us. So let's not go down that route, but you know, <laughs> I just wanted to help people um, <laughs> uh, spell Nigel, you know, there you go. <laughs> 